So an ellipse is basically a oval, okay? And if you think about a circle, every point on a circle is equidistant from the center. And an ellipse is a similar type of concept, except instead of being equidistant from one point, what we actually have is every point on the circle, the sum of the distances from two points are equal, okay? I have a little demo that I'm going to try. I make no promises to see if it's actually going to work, but we're gonna try this out. So what I actually have is basically just a piece of paper on a box. And I have a little string here that is around two tacks, two pins. And basically what this is doing is securing the distance between these two pins. And then I have this extra little flap where if I extend it out, every single point, if I draw this around, the sum from the distance from one of these points, which is called the focus, and the distance from the other focus are added together, it's always going to be the same. Okay, so no matter where that is, it's always going to be the same sum, this distance plus this distance. I'm gonna try it out with a marker, see if I can actually draw this out. We'll see if it works, okay? So, basically I want to try to extend this out as far as I can, little extra tick, and then just go around, and hopefully if everything goes according to plan, we will end up with something that looks fairly elliptical. Not too, too bad, not great, could be better, but it'll do. Okay, so that's basically what is a little ellipse. And every single point, if we take the distance from one of these foci to the other, we'll get the same distance, okay? So that's basically the concept of what an ellipse is. Now, let's go look at the board and get some language about ellipses. Okay, so what we have is basically two different arrangements an ellipse can be. We can either have them horizontally or we can have them vertically. And I apologize for my drawings. I'm not good at circles or ellipses or anything really curved or straight for that matter. So what we actually have is some language. The major axis is what we call the longer diameter, okay? So if we are dealing with a horizontal one, our major axis is going to be the diameter from this endpoint to this endpoint. If we are dealing with a vertical ellipse, our major axis is switched. It's now the longer one from top to bottom. Okay? And the end point to that major axis is called the vertices. Okay? You've heard vertices before, so hopefully that's not a new concept. So here's a vertice, here's a vertice, here's a vertice, here's a vertice. Okay. The other wor word we use is a minor axis, and that's going to be the smaller diameter. Okay? So if we're dealing with a horizontal ellipse, our minor axis is going to be from top to bottom. In a vertical one, obviously side to side. And the endpoints of those are called covertices. Okay? So you'll know that you're talking, if you hear vertices, you're talking about the endpoints of the major axis, the longer diameter. If you hear covertices, you're talking about the endpoints of the minor axis or the shorter diameter. Okay? I often add in a little bit of a different language. I often just call things X radius and Y radius. Just because to me it tends to make a little bit more sense. I say x radius, I know that I'm dealing with this dimension. I say y radius, I know I'm dealing with this dimension. It loses a little bit of the major minor bit, but it's still being able to talk about what's going on and have it understood. Okay, so let's go to the equation of ellipses. And basically they are fairly similar to circles. And what I mean by that is we have an x squared plus y squared and we are equal to something. The difference here is we're having these over fractions. And A is always, so here we have the equation for a horizontal, here we have the equation for a vertical. You see that they're fairly similar. Okay, the only difference is I have switched my A's and my B's, and the reason being is that A is the major axis portion, okay? So A is actually the distance from the center to that vertice, the top of the axes or the side of the axes. And so what ends up happening is our major axes are always 2a and our minor axes are always 2b. b is the distance from the center to the covertice, so therefore the whole axis is twice of that. Okay. In addition, a lot of information I'm throwing at you, hopefully you're following along, we also have what are called foci, which are those two points that I secured my little string with. And there's a relationship between our major, major vertices, our vertices, our co-vertices, and our focus. And that is basically a squared minus b squared is equal to c squared. It's almost like the Pythagorean theorem, but instead of adding, we're subtracting. 
Okay, so a squared is our bigger number. B squared is sorry, our major axes, major radius. B squared is our minor axes, our smaller radius. And C squared is the distance from the center to a foci. And it goes in either direction on that major axis. Okay, a lot of information I'm throwing at you, but hopefully it is all making sense. The main gist, major axis is referring to the wider or the taller portion, the, basically the larger dimension. Endpoints are vertices. Minor axis is the smaller diameter. Endpoints are covertices. Foci are where your two strings would attach and there is a relationship. Large radius squared minus small radius squared is equal to the distance from the center to the focus.